So the change in internal energy of any system is going to be the sum of the two possible changes of energy that could happen between the system and the surroundings. As we said, there are only two possible ways to exchange energy between a system and its surroundings. The first one is uh, heat transfer, Q, and the second one is work, the expansion compression work. And we learned how to calculate the magnitude of each one of them. So uh, heat transfer is usually calculated uh, using MC delta T. And uh, work is calculated using uh, the product of pressure times a change in volume for the system. The system is our reference. So anything that increases the energy of the system is positive. Anything that decreases the energy of the system is negative. So for heat, positive heat is anything, any process where the system absorbs heat. So endothermic processes are positive. Anything that makes the system lose heat to the surroundings is gonna be negative. Exothermic processes are negative. Um, on the other hand, work, compression is positive because when you compress the system, you're actually applying external force or external pressure on the system. So you're adding energy into the system. But when the system expands, this is a loss of energy. So it's going to be negative, negative work. You have a gas sample compressed in a cylinder and the work done during the compression is uh, 462 joules and the heat transfer is 128 joules from the gas to the surroundings. So wording of the problem will tell you what's the sign you should expect for both of these quantities. So compression is work done on the gas. As we said, done on the gas, meaning that you actually put pressure onto the gas, you add energy onto the gas. So that makes a sign of W positive, right? Heat is released from the gas to the surroundings. So it's lost, makes the process exothermic process. So the sign of Q is negative. You will just calculate the sum of both of the quantities, Q plus W, but you have to take into account the sign of each one of them. So we already concluded that the sign of W is positive and the sign of Q is negative. And you just reduce some numbers to get the overall change in energy for the whole system, which is going to be overall positive in this case, which means the system is actually gaining uh, 334 joules of internal energy. It's increasing by that much. So if we look at this example right here, comparing two hikers they use different path but they start from the same starting point and they end up at the uh, same end point so what's the comparison of the change of the potential energy of both of them to each other potential energy only depends on your height from the surface of earth so if you're moving from the same point and ending up at the same point, this is going to be the same uh, change in potential energy. It's not going to depend on the path you take to make this change in position. It, it, it has nothing to do with the path. It only depends on the start uh, point or the starting position and the end position of the object. Uh, so that's a definition of a state function. State function is any property that is determined only by the state of the system, the position of the system, regardless of how you achieve this position or condition. So like potential energy depends on position and it doesn't depend on the path you take to change your position. So energy is a state function. It depends only on the state of the system or the condition of the system, not how uh, what or what pathway you use to achieve this condition. So that means that the change in energy is going to be simply the difference between the final 
energy uh, value minus the initial energy value for the object. And uh, that's the same thing for pressure, volume, and temperature. So the change in pressure for any object is gonna be the difference between the final pressure minus the initial pressure. Same thing for volume. Change in volume is gonna be the difference between the final volume and the initial volume. And the change in temperature is gonna be the difference between the final temperature minus the initial temperature. It does not depend on what pathway the object or the substance used to change from the final value to the, from the initial value to the final value of any of these properties. So these, all these properties are called state functions. Any state function will have a capital uh, symbol. Uh, and that takes us to the uh, first law of thermodynamics is that that states that energy can only be converted from one form to the other and they cannot be created or destroyed. So in mathematical form, the change in energy for any system is gonna be equal to the change in energy of the surroundings. Or in other words, any energy lost by the system has to be completely gained by the surroundings and vice versa. Uh, so if you have a reaction like this, and it's an exothermic reaction, the chemical energy that used to be stored in the bonds of the reactants, when the reaction takes place, all that much chemical bond will be lost due to com combustion and will be completely transferred to the surroundings in terms of heat or work, right? So the whole amount of energy lost by the chemicals in the reactants will be completely gained by the air around it in terms of heat and work. So if we have a piece of lead with that mass right here at an initial temperature with this value and you place it in a constant pressure uh, calorimeter of negligible heat capacity, uh, that contains 100 milliliters of water. And after you transfer it, the water temperature increases from 22.5 to 23.17 Celsius. What's the specific heat of the uh, lead piece? So let's just visualize the problem. What we did was we had a piece of lead with mass that equals 26.47 grams and initial temperature that is 89.98 degrees Celsius, right? And you put this into a container that contains mass of water that equals 100 milliliter or because you know the density of water is one gram per milliliter so it's gonna have a mass of a hundred grams right and it had an initial temperature for the water that equals 22.5 degrees after you mix both of them the final temperature for both of them is going to be 23.17 degrees. The piece of lead lost energy and cooled down from 89.98 degrees to a final temperature of 23.17 degrees. And the amount of heat lost from this is going to be calculated according to the formula mc delta t right so we have the mass we have the change in temperature and we want to calculate this but we don't have this we don't have the amount of heat lost of the metal but we can calculate it because whatever heat 
lost from the metal is going to be completely gained by water, right? And it's only water in this case because the problem says the container has a negligible heat capacity, which means it's not going to absorb any amount of water, right? So we can calculate the amount of heat lost from the lead piece by calculating the amount of heat gained by water. So the amount of heat gained by water is going to equal mass of water times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. So it's going to equal uh, 100 grams times the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules per gram per degree times the change in temperature, which is the final temperature. This is the final temperature, 23.17, minus the initial temperature for water, which is this, which is 22.5. So grams cancels out with grams, temperature cancels out with temperature, and you're left with joules, and it's gonna be 280 joules. And remember, this is positive because water is heating up, which means it's gaining heat. So it's positive change in uh, the heat of water. And according to the first law of thermodynamics, the heat lost from the lid is going to be negative. The heat gained in the water uh, symbol. So that will make it negative 280 joules. So if we go back to the first uh, 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 formula here, we can rearrange it to solve for the specific heat capacity. So the specific heat capacity is going to equal Q divided by M delta T. So we can calculate C by taking Q and divided by the mass of the metal, 26.47 grams, times the change in temperature, which is the final temperature, right? It's, it's 23.17 minus the initial temperature, which is 89.98 degrees. So it's gonna be 0.158 joule per gram per degree.